All right, listen. This episode's a crapshoot. Skype updated. I don't know if it works. I don't know if you can hear me right now. I, I could be very loud. I could be clipping. I don't know what's happening. I think it's like episode 142 or something. We got to relearn how to record the podcast. I'm, yeah. I'm, I can't believe we're only halfway through this fucking Leprechaun franchise. Goddamned animal control. Listen, two times a year. That's your limit. Two times a year. With, yep. I, I know it's $100. We could use the money two times a year. Yeah. That's Our, across the board. That's for everybody. That's for everybody. Um, yeah. uh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> happy yeah. St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You know, I yeah. neglected to realize that last week that we're doing Saint, uh, leprechaun coverage is coinciding with St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, it had occurred to me, but uh, I forgot to mention it. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's either a coincidence or it was planned by the deviousness of animal control. Could have been. You know? Could have been. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are on episode one hundred and forty-four. 44 uh, okay well we are, uh, halfway through these uh amazing treks through time and space with no continuity no nah, nah. I, I listen oh. i spent so much of last week trying to learn as much as i could about the leprechaun that was smart yeah. and this Great week off. there's there's just no continuity um you know Someone on the internet, I think Alex, his name is, mm -hmm. suggested to me that perhaps in each Leprechaun movie, it's a different Leprechaun. Oh, it's just as viable as any. I, it, that's exactly how I put it, Henry. I think it's a viable theory. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know whether it, it, it was the intention or not, but uh, it really fucking doesn't it's make any difference. It's an anthology series about various leprechauns it's sort of like the fargo tv show right right right, right. <laughs> or yeah, exactly. or like um i don't know like they did it's very a, much like fargo you know yeah. like different slayers throughout history the buffy slayers oh there you go yeah. okay sure sure you yeah. learn there's a black one in the 70s it's kind of exploitation -y, black exploitation -y. Oh, oh, oh. then there's like a chinese okay. one during the boxer rebellion <clears throat> oh except right. in this case they all look and sound like warwick davis but some right. of them rhyme more than others some of them are older than others you That's know true. some of yeah, them are in space some of them are in space some of them are statues uh well, that's right some of them get know. blown up some of them can't have four leaf clovers some of them can't have red ruby medallions it seems some, that they some, have a lot of weaknesses. Yes. And it some, should be pretty can, easy to it, take them down. I would think so. I mean, I would think that the magic of a leprechaun would preclude him from needing a spacesuit, but not so. Not in so. Leprechaun in Space, they're hunting the leprechauns, so they know what leprechauns are. Right. And so, like, why don't they know how to defeat it? Like, why don't they have... They should just have, like, a four-leaf clover to weaken the leprechaun, lock right. them in a wrought iron case, and then freeze go. the wrought iron case in carbonite like Han Solo. Very true. Well done. Yeah, yeah, they could just do that. Um, but, but they uh, do not. They pee on <clears throat> him, and it ends badly. That does not go well. Uh, it comes out of that said man, said Marine's dick. Just explodes <clears throat> that, from his dick. That dick's dick. Yeah, uh, as it, though it, a baby from the womb. Right. <laughs> a space yeah. baby. I mean, we'll get there. <laughs> but, uh, the, I mean, get, uh, given uh, the thought we've put into these, we could have made one of these movies, uh, I think you and I, alone with no production Well, team. we'd need yeah. Warwick, I think. I don't know that we would. I feel like a stuffed animal leprechaun <laughs> probably would be fine too. Oh, it uh, would be sort of like that. Shatters. It would be like that fucking Todd Haynes movie where he uses Barbie dolls to be Karen Carpenter. Oh, I don't remember that, but sure. Yeah, it, Lars and the real girl. It could, you know, it could be Dan Henry and the real leprechaun. Sure, or the beaver. 
by Air Mel. No, I, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, that's actually by Jodie Foster, right? Air Mel is just in it. Correct. That's right, her right. one of her directorial gems. She, yeah. Jodie Foster's made so many great films, Henry. She has. Remember she when has. she was trying to make that movie like Flora Plum? Yes. And like that every year it was like it's coming, gang. It's uh, <laughs> Jody Foster's circus film. It'll be out this year for Oscar consideration and then it never came out. An odd one that one. What was the although uh, she directed an episode of something pretty big recently. Was it Mindhunter? Did she do an episode Maybe. of Maybe she's involved with Netflix. She's directed a couple of Oranges as the New the Blacks. Right, right, right. Yeah. You said that title like Bill Cosby. Oh, the orange and the black. <laughs> yeah. New, new blacks. Oh, Bill Cosby. What a great fella. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sticking by that innocence, baby. Yeah. I need to, f- I want there to be, um, you know, I watched four hours of that Leaving Neverland last week, Hank. Oh, yeah. What? Been the talk been been the talk of the town. I, I have no I don't interest. know why it's the talk of the town. We all knew this guy was a child rapist. No shit. Uh, uh, but uh, it was it was worth watching. I enjoyed it. But I would really? like I would like a Cosby version. I would mm-hmm. like uh leaving the Huxtable house. Oh, I think that'll come be that'll be coming soon enough. I hope so. I think that'll be good. A little doc about all the Me Tours. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Like, what, uh, uh, oh, there you go. A new Netflix series. Each episode is one of them. FYI, not a bad idea. Just call it hashtag Me Too. Have each one yep. of them directed by like a notable. Have like Ava DuVernay attached. There you go. And you got one on RV. You got one on Bill. You got one on Jackson. You got you got a whole bunch. One on Singer. Give me one on Toback. Give me Fancy. one on Hardwick. Give me one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, Dep- the Depster. Oh, give me a big one on the Depster for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. You're welcome, Netflix. You are welcome, Netflix. Come on. You've got uh, Shonda Rhimes has a production deal over there. She's got to be working on this with that Ryan Murphy money. Ryan Murphy money. I, I understand half of that reference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Hank. Yeah. You want to talk? We watched two more Leprechaun movies. We did. Yeah. Yeah. It was a joy. I'm in the weeds here. (laughs) I just, Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with these movies. Right. I know. It reached uh, that turning point, like, pretty much in the middle of the second one and now I'm I'm I totally agree with you. Right now it's like I I don't I still I, don't I still felt enthusiastic in the first one and uh, in the first week that we were doing this, okay? And yeah. I thought that them getting goofier would make the series more enjoyable to me. Right. And that has not been the case. No, because the goofiness is not being matched by anything else. So, like the and the and boy, uh, I mean, really, the quality of of three to four in the look and the production. I four reminded me of that uh, scene in Forty Year Old Virgin when they show him the porno. Uh, they show uh, Andy. Oh yeah, por- space balls. Or, space- or it's not space balls. <laughs> no, but it, I, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That was the exact production value of Leprechaun 4. It looked like an old, like mid 90s porno that would be softcore porn that would be shown on, you know, Blowtime or Skinamax, you know. Marilyn Chambers? uh, Yeah. It looked like. (laughs) Like that was the quality. It was like it was incredible. I, I, it was it was like a, a major drop because even in in Vegas we still got like oh. The, the, and you know what's sp- crazy, oh. Hank? The space one has a bigger budget. Yeah, and it looks so yeah. much worse. Yeah, it really does. And it's got nothing to do with the fact that it's in space because I mean, honestly. Jesus Christ! I mean, you can pull off anything, pretty can, much. Can I ask you a question? Did is part of this, Henry? Because I will tell you, um, I had to pay for these films on Amazon.com, so 
And they don't have an HD presentation of Leprechaun 4 in space. Oh, uh, I think you're, you're right. I, I used I have to I used Google Play, uh, and I don't believe I believe you're right. I think I, I think HD was available for for three. It was. I watched Leprechaun right. Four in standard def, full screen. Yeah, I really I got I must go out on a uh, very a strong limb here though, and say that probably didn't affect too much. I think you're probably right. Although, you know, if anything, it might have helped because it made it, you know, part four, it's in space. It felt a little more claustrophobic with the sure. screen closing in on the sides. The only felt thing that felt claustrophobic was the time that I was using to watch it. That felt like a space I couldn't get out of. Honestly, nope. uh, part four was f- was five minutes longer than 90. Yeah, And I, and I was like, I'm sorry. I am terribly sorry, but 90 is my limit on these movies. It, it was really, really long. Like, it it was it was one of those movies where, at a certain point, I actually had the thought, this is still on? Like, I, I was watching it, you know, I, I, I wasn't cooking or anything. I, I was giving it uh, all my brain power. And uh, at one point, I was like, this is still going. I, I was just surprised. I kind of caught myself like, wow, this is amazing. All right, you know? Hank, let's get into them. Yeah. Leprechaun 3. It comes to us straight to DVD. Not DVD. Jesus Christ, it's 1995. Straight to video. Straight to video. <laughs> yeah. Direct to video. Direct to video, sure. Um, so it was released June 27th, 1995. By the way, none of these movies coinciding with uh, St. Patrick's Day. No. Why would they? <laughs> Doesn't really matter, right? I mean, I guess, know. but it would be a fun marketing stunt. Yeah, I, yeah, sure. All right, so it comes out uh, June twenty seventh, ninety five, on a budget of two and a half million dollars, and it was a big success, Henry. This was the number one highest selling straight to video movie of nineteen ninety five. Is that right? Yeah. People were clamoring for that home People movie. wanted it. And so I think that was it. They saw the sales on this baby. They were like, listen, we could put any old shit with this title <laughs> on, on video. People will get it, I guess. Yeah, I think you're right. Because, like, 3 has a, a sense of, all right, we're going to do something here. We're going to put a little little effort Three's into this. 3 is definitely, there's angle. effort. Yeah, there's a camp yeah. angle for sure. There are jokes. Some of them are actually not bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I I definitely liked three way more than four, which I was not expecting because four is silly and fun. Also, three is the one I think I've seen the most. I remembered most stuff from three, and I remembered almost nothing from four. Okay, okay, yeah. um, I, I considerably three was much easier to get through, yeah. These are almost like levels of bodily harm on what you <laughs> what you could sustain. So, like, you know, one of them's like, oh, uh, it's like breaking an arm, and the other one's like, well, this one's like getting a giant needle in your spine. And so, like, on the pain scale, you know, the, the four being like close to like a major head injury. You know, uh, the one in Vegas was kind of just like a, 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 an ankle, a very bad like ankle sprain. I, I may regret these words, Henry, but I honestly don't think that we will again hit the nadir we hit with part four. <laughs> in the Leprechaun series. In the Leprechaun series. Because I, I, uh-huh. I, I genuinely... I hope you're right. I genuinely remember the hood being fun. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and then there's those last two that I've never seen, but I feel like they were made recently enough that like direct to video movies have just become more competent. Yeah, I I had the same thought when I was looking at the years of release. I think what 2014 and then just last year, right? So yeah, I I, I hope you're right. I yeah. I hope I'm right too. All right, so um, we have a new director. He's the only director to direct more than one Leprechaun movie. That's right. Uh, right. He directed Leprechauns 3 and 4, so we're covering his many works this week. 
one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite filmmakers. Did you know that? I did not. It's 100% true. <laughs> wow. And why would that be? I don't know. Because he's okay. on coke. Uh, That's a good point. Yeah, uh, so right. his name is Brian Trenchard Smith. He's an Aussie. Oh, is he really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's directed a lot of um, Australian film industry movies. Uh, some credit him with uh, discovering Nicole Kidman as he directed her first film, BMX Bandits. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, he directed a lot of martial arts stuff, a bunch of war movies. He's just, like, constantly working, and he was on a horror kick around the time of this. He had just done Night of the Demons 2, and I think that got him the gig to make Leprechaun 3. Oh, all right. I see now. Yeah, looking at his work here. Motherfucker's yeah. still working. Like, he never stops working. He just puts movies out. He directed a 9-11 movie in 2003. He beat Oliver Stone to the punch. Wow. All right? Wow. Called DC 9-11, Time of Crisis. And yes, it does have the guy who played George W. Bush in That's My Bush in this serious film. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing that his passion project is a revisionist history uh, reappraisal of Richard III. Is that and true? Yes. <laughs> I'm not. That does sound like a joke that I would make. It uh, does. It, yeah, it's not. Uh, that is something he's been wanting to do since uh, 2011. Okay. Yeah. Our new writer is a fellow named David Dubose, and uh, unfortunately, not much to report here. <laughs> 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 really, I really don't have any, any, I don't know anything about this guy. I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss it. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we want to do our 95 lists? I wouldn't mind. It'll give us something else to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So it's uh, 95, uh, a good year here. All right. You start. I have to find mine. Right. Uh, all right. Can I mention some uh, HMs? I'd yeah. love to hear them. Safe. <laughs> yeah, it's a good movie. The, the Addiction. Okay. Able, able for our... Uh, the Crossing Guard by the fine Sean Penn, uh, Rob Roy, Smoke, Before Sunrise, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Okay, all I got some HMs, Hank, uh, Billy Madison, Dead Presidents, and Party Girl. Hmm, interesting. Very different than mine. All right. All right, number 10, Dead Man Walking. A fine film. My number 10, I'm going with uh, Greg Araki's The Doom Generation, and I, I will give a little shout-out. Greg Araki, uh, a very uh, low-budget indie filmmaker who really never broke into the mainstream and has, has been indie strong since early 90s, Henry. He has wow. a new TV show, which they're letting him write and direct every episode of, premiering tonight on the Stars Network. Really? Yep. I'm so fucking excited for it. It's called Now Apocalypse. So I'm sure it'll oh. be great. Watch that. All right. Cool. All right. Um, now remember... Apocalypse. He inverted your favorite film. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me either completely obligated to watch it or the opposite. Yeah. yeah. Number nine, Living in Oblivion. My number nine is Clueless. All right. Number eight, Nixon. My number eight is Safe. Oh, good one. Uh, number seven, The Usual Suspects. You know, Hank, yeah. I went ahead and left the usual suspects off my list this time. I don't blame you. I'm I, a little uh, too grossed out by it at this juncture. I understand I made a, you know, great minds, my friend. I made a similar reversal later in my list. Okay, interesting. Excited to hear it. My number seven yeah. is Before Sunrise. Good, great movie, great movie. Uh, my number six is Mighty Aphrodite. Okay, <laughs> he's still God around. Yeah, that'll be a great episode of that Netflix series. 
<laughs> Get Mia Farrow to direct it. Oh, um, my number six is Kids. Uh, still, un- still unseen by me. Here we go. Heavy hitters. These the grand slams, the slap shots, the three pointers, the touchdowns, the curling when the get <laughs> close to the circle. These are the heavy hitters of the franchise. Heavy hitters. Casino. Shallow grave. Yes, good movie. I think I took it off because of the year confusion. But right. I'm fine with it. Um, <clears throat> number four, leaving Las Vegas. My number four is Crumb. Another year confusion. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> One of us got it right. Did you redo yours? I redid mine when we did Batman Forever, and I think I'm right oh, on I this. Did. You might be. Okay. Mm. Uh, number three for me is Braveheart. My number three is Living. In- Man, you still got that guy on your list, too, huh? You're, yeah. you're, you just Thank have a you. whole list of fucking toxic masculinity. I'm, I'm trying to give Netflix as many ideas as possible. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> just check out my 95 top 10. Who's going to direct the Mel Gibson one? You need a Jew, I would think. I would hope. Yeah. Uh, J- Jason Reitman. No, it's all ladies. I think you got to have all female filmmakers on the, uh, on the Netflix series. Penny Marshall. <laughs> Penny Marshall, back from the dead to take down Mel. Are you kidding me? I'm sure Penny Marshall was defending Mel Gibson until her dying breath. You didn't know him like I knew him. He never he said anything Jew. anti-Semitic to me in private. He was never a Jew hater. He loved Jews. I had him over for Seder. You know who else loved Jews? Who? Oh. Hector Elizondo. Oh, my God. Enough with that, Gary. He loved us. He could spin a dreidel like no other. Well, I always liked the Mexicans, too, so there you go. That's right. We both like foods in pockets of other foods. All right. My number... (laughs) I can put it in the pocket of my cheek. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. My number three is Living in Oblivion. Uh, All right. My reversal... (laughs) Which actually isn't quite fair, but it's such a major part of the movie. But uh, uh, my number two now is seven. Oh, oh, oh! Because of fucking Spacey, whatever. My number two is still fucking Heat. That's my number one. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I figured, but yeah, my yeah. my number one remains seven. I, I don't give a shit. Whatever. He's in like a third of the movie. It's fine. Yeah, no, your your case for the usual suspects is definitely way. That's way better. Uh, but I also have uh, a recency bias with uh, uh, Heat. Uh, rewatched it not too long ago, and also uh, something about there's something about at least when they're fucking off screen. It's it's a little easier to take, you know. You know what I mean. We've talked about this, like even on the X Men movies, which it, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. I guess I don't have to look at them. I know? feel like um, I'm okay with movies up to the point where I found out. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't see a Kevin. I, I couldn't see that. a new Kevin Spacey movie. No, me neither. And I mean, I'm gonna have to get past it, obviously, because Seven is awesome. Yeah, yeah, check it. out Billionaire Boys Club. <laughs> What's that? That's that movie that came out after he got Me Too. That only, like made literally like six hundred dollars at the box office. Oh, I yeah yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm completely comfortable with Heat being on there. I mean, I've I've never put it at number one because of my Fincher rule. But, uh, of course, <laughs> your rule that he must be at number one if he directed exactly. a movie that year. I broke, I broke that rule in my last 2008 list. So, you know, it happens. Yeah. Oh, is Benjamin Button in not the best movie of that year? No. Oh. The Dark Knight. Uh, yeah. Interesting. I'm sticking with that. All right. Let's talk about Leprechaun 3. Okay. All right, so um, what do we have here? Do you want to talk about the leprechaun status quo, or should we get into our new uh, fucking uh, young characters, our humans? Oh, you know, it's all of a 
package so whatever you know comes to mind first i'm uh, uh i listen I, I i am so fucking bored of this leprechaun i want to talk about scott and tammy all right uh i'm team tammy over scott yeah a hundred percent oh um, yeah i didn't i didn't think we'd agree on that okay yeah. now um made the i made the mistake this week a bunch of times of looking up actors like before the movie started and um then only being depressed by their performances because of this. <laughs> um so Tammy is one of them. Um, okay. Uh she quit acting. Leprechaun 3 is her fi- her last credit on IMDb. And, really? And um apparently she interned at the Howard Stern show in the year 2000 and talked about Leprechaun 3 on air. Okay. And she hasn't been heard from since. Really? Yeah. 19 years ago. Yeah, so I hope she's doing all right. Jeez. Probably popped out a couple kids or whatever. Um, I, I uh, mean, look, she's pretty charming in this movie. They have a real meet cute. Uh, they, yeah. like, run into each other on the road. He's uh, f- He's coming through Las Vegas to go to Los Angeles, right? Is he, right. like, trying to be a filmmaker or something? Uh, no, uh, she says, oh, what are you going to be, an actor? And, uh, he has, it's, it's some mundane thing, isn't it? Like, oh, my, my uncle has, like, a plumbing business or some shit like that, I thought. I don't remember. Um. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, but, uh, he says it with, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, elan and, uh, conviction. Sure. And, And she jumps into the hitchhiker vehicle in Vegas, which, you know, probably is more common than I would like to think. Uh, yeah, no well, problem. she no she problem. um she's a magician's assistant. That's right. And she's trying to get to work to work alongside this magician. And um, I have no idea how old she is, Henry. She could be anywhere from seventeen to thirty. Yeah. <laughs> she's got one of those uh, kind of ambiguous age faces. You can't have tell whatsoever. But also, uh, how old are you if you're a magician's assistant? Like. And, yeah, well, you could be 90. Well, yeah. I thought she was, like, a kid, like, y- young, like, doing this, like, on the side. But, like, the magician seems relatively famous. And also, she seems to know the owner of the casino. Right. Yeah, very strange. Yeah, so she's really. got to have been there for a while, huh? It's a very intimate casino, shall we say. Uh, yeah, it's, there's really – there's only four people that work there. And it's, like, <laughs> there's – <laughs> and one room, yeah, two there's, rooms. Yeah. There's four people that work in this casino. The owner of the casino, one magician, one magician's assistant, and, and then, like, one w- and one um, roulette dealer. Right, Lenora. Right? Yeah, she Lenora. sort of looks like Frau Farbesina from um, Austin Powers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and a couple of uh, funny henchmen. Yeah. I guess. I, I mean, yeah, they're farting around, but I mean, they don't—they never g- are given that much to do. Supposed to be. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> anyway, he. Um, so they meet up, and he is immediately into her, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can tell, you, but you... she's sort of not feeling it. And I have a bone to pick with this whole movie because, like, it's got like a speed structure. Where it's like these two uh, strangers who one of them is attracted to the other, they're thrown into a dangerous situation. And then it's like they get a meet cute, it's got like a rom com structure kind of. And then at the end of the movie, Henry. Yeah. They like, you know, one of them says, like, Did you get what you want? And the one guy says, I already have everything I want. And it's like they're right. going to move in for a kiss. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. She just sort of like toss tousles his hair or something. Right. And then the right. movie ends. Right. Well, she did, might have had a she, clause in her I contract. mean, did this actress say, like, I'm not going to kiss this guy? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who knows? It's you know? bonkers. Uh, it is bonkers. There needs um, to be a kiss at the end of this movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, this was the, this actually, this movie was the, the a turning point for my leprechaun viewership, um, I realized that every time the leprechaun was not on screen, I was being 
more entertained. I, Henry, I had the same revelation. Really? I really did. Honestly. Yeah, Because, right? like, when the leprechaun's not on screen, you're kind of just watching, like, a silly slasher movie. Exactly. And and, yeah. and I like silly slasher movies. It's just, like, some dumb teens chatting up and, like, yeah. and, you know, and sometimes there's boobs and sometimes yeah. there's silly jokes. He and, was interrupting the flow. And then we just have to keep cutting to this. And, and it's a real problem, Henry, because... This guy, his only fucking motivation ever is losing a goddamn gold coin. One shilling. One yeah. shilling. And listen, it's his own fault. He's walking around with this pot of gold. And Very it is dumb. over fucking flowing. He needs to put like a lid on it. I, I agree. Get a bigger pot. Uh, you know, I know it looks bigger in a smaller container. But, you know, uh, really, who's he showing this to? You know, he or needs some more. just don't security. fucking carry it around everywhere. Right. Put uh, it in a <laughs> bank. Surely there's like there's a Gringotts, you know, like the the fucking uh, yeah. wizard bank. But pop it Absolutely. in there. Yeah, or, you know, it's Vegas. They have safes everywhere. I mean, he could go anywhere he wants. And then that, you know, of course, leads to his, you know, uh, beating to death uh, the poor uh, Indian fellow. This poor uh, I, pawn shop owner, Henry. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! So uh, we first meet the the leprechaun. He's a statue now. He's remember the last movie ended with him getting blown to pieces. <laughs> he's now a statue. He's not worried about the piece of gold that the kid had in the last movie because let, let, I mean, listen. Let's pretend. That yep. this is the same leprechaun every time. Sure, absolutely. So he threw the piece of gold. He must have somehow reassembled and gotten it. All right, right? Uh, and 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 ended up in Vegas. But somewhere along the way, there's like a missing adventure where he turns into a statue. That could be. Yeah. Yeah. Off screen. We there was a lot of action that happened. I'm gonna yeah. guess maybe he ran into a Medusa. A hundred percent. Yeah. One mythical creature to another. Sure. You know, so they were, they were, they were of fighting a pillar somewhere of salt, off of. He's a uh, stone. Right. Well, no, no, Medusa turns you to stone. Yeah. She doesn't turn you into a pillar of salt. You're, you're thinking biblically. Uh, that's the story of, um, uh, if you, uh, saw, saw, saw Sodom and Gomorrah, I believe if they turn, if you look back, you turn to a pillar of salt. You look back at the destruction behind you. Oh, interesting. Believe There's a lot it, of that. It. There's a lot of that. Don't look back in the, in the, it's, it's sort of like Orpheus, right? When he comes out of that's hell. Right. That's right. <laughs> Cannot look back to his, uh, wife and, uh, yeah. His Yuri, wife. Yuri, Yuri, Yuri yeah. You're a DJ. Very well done. I said that wrong, but you're a dice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he looks back. He looks Eurydice. Back. Eurydice. Eurydice, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. What a rube I sounded like. Yes, yes, Eurydice. Yes. All right, rube. Um, <laughs> so um, he uh, there's a medallion around his neck, and the guy is uh, wants to see if this medallion is going to make any money. Right. So he takes the medallion off and he examines it. Um, it's pretty good. But then the big find is there's a pot of gold. <laughs> yeah. And in another great, uh, you know, thing that we do in uh, in movies and definitely did at the time, uh, played by an Argentinian actor. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's funny. Who obviously looks just like someone from India, so uh, we're good. Well, he's doing the Apu yeah. voice, Henry, so right. you know he's right. Indian. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, Henry, so he, uh, the leprechaun, now uh, the medallion, I guess, was keeping him stone. Right. And so, another weakness, yes. Another weakness, yeah. Uh, so he, he turns into a leprechaun again. Immediately bites the Indian fella's ear and proclaims, I like Indian food. So spicy. (laughs) (sighs) 
the yeah. uh, the leprechaun has never met a uh, cultural stereotype that he does not <laughs> enjoy bringing it's, up. It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess we can be relieved. Well, we're not done yet, I guess. We have four more to go. So I'm sure we're going to get other uh, some fun fun punny racial references in the in the next few uh, installments those will be cool sure um <laughs> so um what else? oh well yeah a leprechaun in the hood i recall having a ton of that gotta have it yeah, yeah but it's at she's, least she's gotta have it <laughs> it has the same level of racial subtlety that she's gotta have it has uh so they um the the Indian guy, the leprechaun gets away, and with with nary an ear, right. and um and and the Indian guy puts in a, a CD ROM. Yes, I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, it's a CD ROM of myths and legends, and he yeah. searches the word leprechaun, which seems to lead to a flash animation video about leprechauns. That Very lasts odd. maybe four hours long. Yeah, it's. I was just gonna say, it's on a, a loop. It's on a perpetual. It's loop. It's not on a perpetual loop because we never see the same thing twice. This is the longest fucking flash animation video oh, you that's have a ever good seen. Point. That's a good point. That every time they show it, there's like a new bubble about a new fact. Henry, yeah, did you ever you ever purchase a CD ROM? I feel like uh, it probably like came with a cd i must have bought in the 90s I, or something i will tell you oh, no. i i bought a cd rom box set once that i thought was really? like the greatest purchase ever obviously yeah. and i'll never be able to use it and i'll never want no. to uh it but, was you know, you're in okay the time. Yeah. it was the time it was when the 500th issue of the amazing spider-man came out there you go. They released a CD-ROM collection where you Extra could content. you could read no 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 the first oh. five hundred issues of Spider Man. Ooh, it was like collected on like forty CD-ROMs. Oh my god! So it was like so then it was like this is such a great purchase. I could read the first five hundred issues of Spider Man. I just have to sit at my desktop computer while I do it. <laughs> For 11 years. For 11. Yeah. So I think I read like the first like 11 issues and I was like, I think I'll just buy like the trade paper bags. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. they were like the original cuts of the book. So they had the original ads, which were like cool for a second. And yeah. then you were just like, now I just have to like keep like scrolling through pages of ads. Right, right, right. Yeah. Build muscle. I remember the one of the most frequent ones in the Batmans of the eighties and nineties. In those pages, the ads was like uh, X-ray glasses. I'm not talking about the nineteen sixties, folks. These were in comics in the fucking eighties and nineties. Do you remember any of that, Dan? Yeah, of course. There, there was like um, a, a page in the back. It was like yellow, and they'd have yeah. like little um, little captions for different. Uh, right toys that you can and get. one of the big ones also was like become a he-man in in two days and like yeah it was, it was good stuff i remember sea yeah. monkeys being big oh yes yeah big, big <laughs> oh the he-man thing i know what you're talking about because they'd have the hero of the beach cartoon yeah well they'd want you to i think the idea was you know you're a kid and you're reading superhero comics you know how can i look like that so they would be like you know you can look like this and so if you're uh, a skinny little dwarf or a fat nerd or something, whatever, and you could be like, holy shit, man. I just turned to page seven of Detective Comics 498. <laughs> oh, I know. What happened in that issue, Henry? Uh, Detective Comics 498. Uh, Jim Gordon quit smoking. Oh, <laughs> I don't think that happened. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Henry. Uh, so the um the 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 fella Scott he goes yes. gambling at the uh, underage. casino underage, but whatever we think underage. We don't know how old he is. So well, say, yeah, uh, how old is he? No, they say she says you're not old enough to gamble, so you can't gamble. I'm gonna let you in to see the place, but then you can't cause any trouble. Tammy said that. Yeah. So wait, Tammy's like an older woman. 
Well, she's obviously over 21. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. It, it is interesting. It's a strange dynamic. Yeah. You know, that, Tammy uh, is obviously also continually sexually harassed by uh, everyone. Everyone in every- sight. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, I think his name's Mitch, but I could be wrong. Mitch is the is the magician or the cl- or the casino owner. Well, Fazio is the is the magician. <laughs> That's right. Right, Fazio. Yeah, uh, I think Mitch is the uh, pit boss. I don't even think he's an owner. I don't know what this guy does. He stands at the tables. He monitors who's winning. You know, if he's an owner, he he doesn't have a lot to do. This guy really. runs the show, Hank. Yeah, he so, does everything. He's involved in the magic show. He does every aspect of this. You know. So um, so he 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 gambles at the roulette table, and he loses yeah. all the money that he was going to use to get out to L.A. Oh, and go to college. That's what it was. His parents gave him an envelope. Right, oh, that's for right. Twenty three thousand dollars, and he loses it all. And uh, uh, and it's because they're um, they're doing a thing with like a magnet under the table. Yeah, yeah. And that, so they're, uh, they're making people lose on purpose. Yeah, and I mean, so yeah. uh, he he goes he he needs to pawn something to get more money so he can win his money back. Mm-hmm. And they tell him, uh, go across the street. There's a pawn shop. You'll know the place. <laughs> so he goes he, he he goes outside right across the street. There's a giant sign that says <laughs> the pawn place. Right, right. Because there's only one yeah, in Vegas. But it's yeah. giant. The pawn place. Then one he place. uh he he uh says to himself, Oh, this must be the place. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and yeah, he was right. He was. Yeah. So he gets in there, and uh, little does he know, there's a leprechaun running around while a leprechaun CD-ROM plays in the background. It's true. It's true. At this point, is is the lep uh, in the back locked away? By yeah, a, he's in a the back, of? and uh, in there's there's a a tussle, and right. in the process, of course, the leprechaun loses a shilling. <laughs> And uh, Scott gets it. He goes to bet it across the street, and the magical properties of the shilling offset the magnet under the table. And so anywhere he puts on the table, that's where the the rule out wheel. I I, I don't think the science is sound here, but uh, that's what happens. (laughs) No, and he plays the different numbers. Um, He splits some stuff. Remember how I I showed you roulette? That's right. uh, you won. I lost, but I showed you how to play. <laughs> Henry, not only did you uh, lose uh, uh, in roulette, but um, <laughs> you uh, took twenty dollars out of the ATM and then lost, lost it on it. the way to the table. That's right. God, that was so weird. Yeah, it just fell out of your pants. Remember, I remember that. That was so bizarre. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, oh well. <laughs> yeah. So the le- so of course this gives the leprechaun motivation as he needs in every film he uh, he of course uh, rhymes to himself with all this killing I've lost me shilling yeah the rhyming gets uh, that's another thing I wanted to point out it waxes and wanes doesn't it yes there's like it, no it, rhyming in the fourth one no like well no that's right but in in the third one the cadence of the rhymes often don't match and so you'll think there's a rhyme coming and then it doesn't happen you know so well it seems like he's just he's constantly rhyming killing with shilling right Uh. but then often he won't rhyme anything he'll be like uh you know uh, i was after me pot of gold and then i found a chainsaw but on my way to the bank I caught a cab. <laughs> yeah. It happens all the time. It's like it's like they just gave up trying to write rhymes and puns. And- but, Henry, they, they wrote the best one yet, and they'll never oh. top it. Oh. What's that? Of course, I am referring to, uh, for pulling this trick, I'll chop off your dick. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was very <laughs> enjoyable to me. Um, yeah. So um, the, the leprechaun, he's trolling around Las Vegas, so we get a lot of fun stuff. He sees the Golden Nugget Casino, Henry, and he says, I'd like one of those because, you see, it's gold. Right. And he likes right. gold very much. Right. Keyword trolling around. Yes. Good call. Um, yeah. he, you know, he gets into a few fights, a few tussles on the streets of Vegas. We find out he's got green blood. Which yeah. isn't overly surprising, I suppose. No, no. Um, and uh, we head back inside the casino. The leprechaun's looking for Scott. At one point, Tammy gets... Um, <clears throat> what happens? She's sort of hypnotized. Yeah, very odd. Uh, the, the, at one point, the, the pit boss gets the coin, right, and wishes that he could have... Oh, uh, that's right, because the shilling... Yeah. We didn't realize this. We knew that the, um, the leprechaun can grant wishes. Right, new development. But apparently, each of his shillings, or maybe just this one in particular, also grant wishes. So, um, the, the, yeah, the, the casino owner or pit boss is holding a shilling, and the... Um, you know, one of the people says, like, wouldn't you uh, want to, don't you, you know, because they're talking raw about fucking Tammy because they're all creeps. Like, right. wouldn't, wouldn't you want a piece of that fucking ass? <laughs> wouldn't you well, want to get Lenore up in that gets till? It, right? First, Lenore gets it and wishes to look younger and uh, thinner. And, and so she gets it. And then Pit Boss steals it from her. And then that's when Leprechaun blows her up. Essentially. Yeah, right. And it's sort of like off to the side, like, don't you wish you could fuck that girl? And, right. And right, he right. says, yeah, I wish. And right. um, soon and then enough. Then he has a girl come out of a television. Yeah. What's the, when's that? Oh, my what? God. Wait, I'm not up to yeah. that yet. That is okay, so yeah, goddamn good. Uh, right. No, Tammy um, tries to, she, uh, she's like, oh, I have to fuck this guy now. She's like hypnotized by this wish. And so she right. comes to find the pit boss and they go upstairs. It reminded me a lot of that scene in Snake Eyes where Carlo Gugino is using that one guy for cover. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, they go upstairs to the room and um, he, she is just about to fuck him. Like she's got some clothes off and shit. And yeah. uh, she comes right she's back into her right mind somehow. And uh, uh, she gets slapped or something, doesn't she? How does that happen? Well, I think he uh, Scott follows her up to the room. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, all the, erstwhile, Scott is turning into a uh, leprechaun himself this whole time. God, I fucking forgot about that. Uh, which leads to some very binary acting going on in his place. It leads to nothing. Good. Yeah. <laughs> It is. It's like a werewolf thing. So there's like a couple right. scenes where you see him like looking in a mirror, like "What's happening to me?" But like nothing yeah. really happens. No, he does not. In fact, become a leprechaun. At one point, I think he like rhymes absentmindedly, which I enjoy. oh yes, yeah. He's 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 in the uh, <clears throat> casino restaurant and he's eating a lot of potatoes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he orders all the kinds of potatoes on right. the menu. There is no famine in his Ireland. Yeah, That's so right. I guess we learn another thing about the leprechaun. He loves potatoes. Well, that's an Irish person joke. Is it? Yes. Oh, yes. We all love potatoes, Lottie. That's what we eat. Potatoes. That's why they picked potatoes. Yeah, I knew about the potato famine. We had to do a project about it every year in high school. Really? Yeah, every single year because we the head of the English department was an Irish lady. Oh, there you go. That's fair. Miss McGivern. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Miss McGivern, I'll be damned if you're not going to learn about me grandpappy's potato farming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that little number is thrown in there, potatoes. So how does uh, that lady come out of the TV? Well, we get kind of a Max Headroom thing, right? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. He he's with Tammy, and then what? Ha she's she's off the scene. She leaves. So uh, she she leaves comes to her right TV mind. Starts, yeah, because he's with her, and the he thinks the TV's talking to him, 
uh, and because it, it's the leprechaun. Uh, oh, and then that's he, right. He's manipulating the television from, I believe, st- standing behind it, yeah. which was weird. And then he turns this, uh, another one of those illusory uh, effects where, you know, like in, uh, what was it, 2, where we got the guy going for the uh, breasts right. and they turn into... Uh, silos and uh now he, he's got a television lady coming out but it's really like an ex machina thing going on there yeah you yeah. got to see some big boobs there for sure yeah. yeah yeah um and uh you know then what happens uh and then marlon brando came in and he said i'm seeding all my power over to michael tom you're out i'm sorry I'm sorry, you're not the consigliere. Oh, wait, no, that was what I would have rather be talking about. I'm sorry. Uh, where were we? Uh, the, uh, metallic TV, yes. At one point, there's a really long conversation between the two henchmen about whether boxers or jockeys are the better underwear. Correct. It goes on for like five minutes. It's a while. <laughs> Yes, they're the comedic relief in a comedic. But relief. it's but it's funny. Like usually, like bouncers like this, or like henchmen, they're, like they they do like physical comedy. Like, well, we're we're big, so we're gonna fall. In this movie, we're we're doing like you know, it's like fucking Seinfeld era. I was just gonna like, say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it ha- yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like with the, the, they're talking to each other. Like, what happens when the sock gets stuck on the side of the dryer? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> People, do your do you do your uh, do your Jerry there. I'm a bee, and I'm gonna fuck a lady. All right, there you go. Yeah. So um, th- that the movie happens, and I have a note here, Henry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. His encephalogram is fuck you in four leaf clover. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> right he gets an eeg and uh <clears throat> he's like not in good shape and who is uh, this a, this is the kid who's turning Scott. into a leprechaun yeah yeah they want to know what's going on with this kid and they're evil doctors and they want to keep him for testing and uh, his encephal his eeg i can't say that other word uh it's uh fuck you and then they read uh, also, I believe they read another thing, right? And it's like a bunch of leprechauns just dancing around on a yes. piece of paper, too. <laughs> yes, I do recall his, that. His lifeline. I don't know. His EKG. I don't know. Yeah, no. it's real good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hospital sequence there, like in Halloween. I'm sure. Uh, can we, are we done yet? I'm good. How do they defeat the leprechaun in this one? Flamethrower? Uh-huh. I think there was a flamethrower. I'm trying to remember. Uh, let me see. I think I have it right here. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, it's uh, in the uh, magic room, right? Because Fazio gets uh, actually sawed in half, right? Yes, yes. Way. I kind of enjoyed that. Yeah, so you see his intestines coming out. Um, and then they uh, they they flamethrow... But they flame throw the actual gold, right? And that burns up the leprechaun, right? That's they don't right. burn him. So I don't know. I mean, there's a hundred years between this one and the next one. So I, I mean, I assume he spent that time like reamassing his collection of gold. He may, maybe went to all four corners of the solar system. He could have teamed up with Thanos and and done something in that regard. I don't know. Is he a watcher? I a don't. Lepre- I do not believe the Leprechaun films take place in the MCU. Well, they take place in some CU, and I don't know which one. So he could be friends with some- Howard the Duck. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. Hey, man, throw Howard the Duck in one of these things, and then you got me watching. You see, and uh, I, I think. Henry, maybe you remember last week we were talking about how I was turned on a little bit by uh, the leprechaun trying to fuck that lady. Right, that was abnormal. Sure, yeah. I think maybe this all stems from me seeing Howard the Duck as a kid because I Leah, Leah Thompson. Right? I wanted Leah Thompson to fuck Howard. Well, you just wanted to see Leah Thompson fuck anything. I think I like human humanoid sexual relationships. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
Maybe you have a fetish that you didn't realize. I think there's a new fetish that I'm just now discovering. It's 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 harmless. Yeah, you're fine. I'm not sure. You're not gonna. Bro. You're not gonna get me tooed for for a humanoid. Huh. I guess that's true. There's no. You'd be one like Oscar really Isaac. <laughs> Maybe I gotta find one of these uh, people that have had plastic surgery in order to like look like a cat. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get somebody to look like Tigress. Yeah. What? Who's yeah, Tigress? Tigra? Is that the one? Uh, Tigress? She's like a. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, or am I? Th- no, I wasn't thinking of Hellcat. I'm thinking of the one. No, in, Tigra. Uh, She's in the Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's Tigra. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, <laughs> what do you give this movie? It's good, <laughs> it's good content here. Uh, this is getting, uh, I'm staying on my streak. Uh, oddly, it's uh, getting a one. I know. I'll, I'll give it a one also, man. I, to me, Leprechaun 2 is still the high watermark at it, too. Yeah, not for me. I mean, I do have a ranking so far. Oh, me too. Uh, and it's pretty easy. Mm. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I'll, I'll tell you it. It's 2134. 2134. 2134. Two, two, All right. Uh, I have mine at a 3124. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I, I think I liked Vegas more than the first one. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, it certainly kept my attention more. But the first one had, like, Jennifer Aniston and shit. Oh, well, that's the high point. You're right. Um, but you know me and, 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 and casino-type movies. I, I, maybe, the, maybe the atmosphere was nice to have something distract me from what was happening on screen. I could look behind and see who was playing what games. <laughs> Absolutely. It's interesting. Enjoying that. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. I'm looking at my MVP. Oh, LV- I'll just go with Tammy. Yeah, I'll 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 go with Tammy as well. I, I might I might say Warwick Davis is my LVP in all these movies. Yeah, he I had him uh, on this. I was going to make a decision right here. I had him tied with uh, the kid, but uh, kids kids way more engaging. Yeah, agreed. So Honestly, Warwick- once the ki- the kid sucks once he is stuck in this horrible I'm turning into a leprechaun storyline. Right. And it's because he's turning into a leprechaun. And the worst part of these leprechaun movies is anything to do with leprechauns. Correct. You're right. Yeah. So so Tammy for, for MVP, uh, Warwick for LVP. Um, that's uh, my story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I do have a two- on the superhero camp. I'd love to hear it. Oh. <laughs> just let it play out. <laughs> yeah, I should just do like the Oscars. Just let it play through from now on throughout my announcement. Okay. <clears throat> The character uh, Mitch, who I'm still pretty convinced is the pit boss. That is. It's 100%. He, she calls him Mitch a bunch. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So that's by the actor Michael Callan. And I thought he was fine as like a swarthy weirdo. Right. I mean, he's obnoxious, but that's, that's what the part. they told him to do. Yeah. yeah. So he was in uh, the short-lived TV series Superboy. Uh, and he played Metallo. Oh, kind of a major villain. There you go. All right. Yeah. And uh, our pawn shop friend, played by the actor Marcello Tubert. I kind of thought uh, he was fine, too. I feel a little worse about it now that I know he's a uh, Argentinian yeah. fellow. I know, yeah. Uh, he was in a lot of voice actor stuff, so... I'll just give you he two He can certainly here. do voices. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He was in Justice League Gods and Monsters uh, playing the pivotal role of tough guy. Seems like it. And he was also in a bunch of episodes of Batman, the animated series. Playing who? 
a whole bunch of different people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Listed. Listed. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was going to make a joke that he's playing a minority, but I literally can't think of a Batman character that's a minority. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, there are. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I think really? Batman might be the least diverse superhero comic ever. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You got Ski versus is, the Is one. there a single black character in Batman? There's, uh, in, uh, <laughs> Shadow of the Bat, there's uh, an anti-hero That's named, your uh, fucking pull? I just, it just came into my head. I this don't is know. Over, this is like a hundred years of Batman history. You can't think what? of a fucking black character that's not a random anti-hero from Shadow of the Bat? Ryan, yeah. No, you may have a good point there. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. There's they like seem to like maybe come in and out, but you're right. Montoya's yeah, Latino, right? Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, Black Spider is the one I believe I'm thinking okay. of. Okay, yeah. well done. Yeah, yeah, it's, no, you're right. Look at that. God, wow. <sighs> Surely, Black did, Robin. They could have. They no. should have made Jason Todd black. Yeah. 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 Sure. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy, the mag the maga boys are gonna love this episode. Oh yeah, uh, they found your comic. Listen, we're talking Batman, and we're virtue signaling here on the franchise. That's right. That's All right. right. That's um, right. Hank. Yeah. You ready to talk Leprechaun Four? It colon. All right, Leprechaun Four colon in space. Uh, they're um uh they're in space in this one. Is that where they are? Yep. And it's many years in the future. I didn't realize it would be a, a future movie. I, I just knew they were in space. Um, yeah. But if, I guess Jason X was a future movie, and so is this. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, it is directed again by Brian Trenchard Smith. Why is it hyphenated, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. I don't know. Did he like uh, adopt his wife's last name or something? Maybe. Maybe he did. Uh, or yeah. maybe both parents are important to him. I knew someone who did that once, so I don't know. Yeah. Me father, <laughs> Colby Trenchard. And Colby me, Trenchard. And me mother, Tina Smith. I miss my parents. I want to honor them and take both the names, hyphen it. Brian Trenchard Smith. I'm such Not- a fucking idiot. I, I had to come up with Australian names just now, Henry. And I, mm. I just realized I just ca- I came up with uh, players from Survivor Australia. None of them are actually Australian. They just played <laughs> Survivor in Australia. <laughs> well, you know, I, I could understand that error, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I should have gone with Eric the, Bana. No, yeah. maybe Crocodile Trenchard. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Crocodile, Crocodile Trenchard at yeah. your service. There you go. Me, <laughs> me hat's pretty far from me pot of gold. Boy, that what an accent contest that would be. I like the hyphen though. It's uh, it it, it works. It's very highfalutin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, hey, look, look who we're talking about. Here. He's sort of the Alexandra Ocasio Cortez of low budget direct to video filmmaking. Yeah, All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a force. He's a force. It sure yeah. is. Henry, um, we have a new writer. His name is Dennis Pratt. No relation yeah. to uh, Chris or Spencer. And no. uh, he's he's written some movies. Uh, he got this job off of writing Kickboxer 3 The Art of War. Perfect. Which is a kickboxer movie that does not feature Jean Claude Van Damme. Ooh. In ouch. fact, the star of it appears to be the guy from Step by Step. <laughs> step by Step. Henry, you watch Step by Step? When when is it? When was that on? Um, it was on the early '90s, maybe. Um, and uh, so, it, it, Patrick Duffy was the lead, and. Um, I oh, believe, uh, what's her name? Suzanne Summers was the mom, and it was a blended family sitcom. 
Okay. Like uh, like uh, Brady Bunch. Right, and uh, right. Sasha Mitchell, who plays the kickboxer in the in Kickboxer 3, um, he uh, played this guy, Cody. And Cody. He, Cody lived in a in a in a like a trailer home, but like in the backyard of the family. Okay. Okay. And his name was Cody, and he's he sort of talked like this, cha. Right. Right. And um and then I remember I think they fired the actor from Step by Step because it was like a family show, and he got right. arrested at one point for like beating up his wife. Oh. Okay. Fair enough. Anyway, that's listen, sort of, that's, listen. That's, I'm that's grasping sort of like, at straws. Things to talk about on this episode. I fucking hate these Leprechaun movies. No, they're fucking garbage. They're horrible to cover. They're horrible to watch. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you reminded me of something about a family show that that I don't think a lot of people remember. You want to hear something? I bet you don't know. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, why not? Um, all right. So you know how like Angel Heart, right? Love the, I love that movie. I'm a big fan. Right, you had me at Angel. Right, <laughs> you've seen it, right? Yeah, I've seen it. But forced on you by me, or you already <laughs> For, seen it? forced upon me by you? Yes. Was it really? Okay, all right, all right. But did did you like it? Yes, I did. Okay, okay, yes. Do so you remember Lisa Bonet is in that movie? Of course. And do you remember? Th- do you, have you ever heard this? Is it that Zoe big- Kravitz's mom? You mean? Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. It was a big problem when she was in that movie uh, because that movie uh, came out in 1987, height of the Cosby Show, and Bill Cosby was very upset that Lisa Bonet was in such a scandalous movie and uh. bare breasts. No one's ever mentioned that. I guess there's so much like stuff to even think about. It's like overload. But Bill Cosby's Cosby. always been that way. He like he's no, no, all, I know. he's all right. about calling out young black people on like yeah. making See, poor choices. Yeah. 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 But I just remember of all things he was upset that Lisa Bonet was yeah. Uh, no daughter of mine is gonna show her little nipples. Very pure man. Yeah. yeah. Henry in Leprechaun 4, it comes out February 25th, 1997 on a budget of $3 million, okay? Okay? Yeah. Okay? I'm, I, uh, yeah. Could no do, argument here. we do our 97 lists? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure, you, buddy. You, you start. All right. Uh, I'm going to go through some HMs. Right, go nuts. The Edge. Donnie Brasco. Amistad, U-Turn, The Ice Storm, Yuli's Gold, Con Air, Eve's Bayou. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good my year. God. Good year, 97. I remember that year very well. Lost Highway. Come on, you, you needed to bring up Con Air and Eve's Bayou. Could we hurry the fuck up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was it. I don't know okay. why I rushed you. I can't find my 97 <laughs> list. Oh, you did either. I knew you could. I could Lapping through. You know? I found it. I found it. Um, all right. All right. Go, go first. ahead. You, uh, you want me to go first? Uh-huh. All right. Number 10. I've got uh, Chasing Amy here. All right. Wait. I've 10. got honorable mentions. Contact. Right. LA Confidential. The Ice Storm. She's So Lovely. Suburbia. The House of Yes. Happy Together. Nowhere. And Four Little Girls. All, I, I haven't heard of about two or three of those, but the other ones are all great. All right. And so, 10 is good. Chasing Amy. All right. Ten. Gattaca. Okay. <laughs> Straight up Gattaca. Straight All up. Right. My number nine is uh, Schizopolis. Never saw it. Yeah, one, two. Uh, oh, I remember this list now because I still haven't rewatched uh, Boogie Nights, number nine. <sighs> right. I, my, know. I know. I know. My number eight is Goodwill Hunting. Too low. My number eight is Waiting for Guffman. My number seven is Hard Eight. That's 96. Not in America. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, number seven is Copland. Oh, Copland. People love it. My number six is In the Company of Men. Great movie. I'm writing that down now. Uh... <laughs> 
Number six, Chasing Amy. My number... Oh, heavy hitters. Heavy hitters. My uh, number yeah, five is uh, a film that I I felt uh, that... Um, that this movie leprechaun 4 was kind of a shittier version of and that is uh starship troopers there you go you see that um it was kind of a cross between starship troopers and alien wasn't it that's what they were going for in a with like a little bit there's like the alien princess thing it reminded me of like a john carter of mars kind of a feel there you go some edgar rice burrows in there all right number four Number five for me, uh, Jackie Brown. And that's my number four. And my number four is L.A. Confidential. And my number three is on this list somewhere. It's Deconstructing Harry. Okay. My number three is Good Will Hunting. And my number two is Waiting for Guffman. My number two is The Game. (laughs) That's so fucking high. You don't even you have it as an honorable mention. You fucking love dude. David Fincher, man. I'm yeah, wait, I, you know I do. I know, but you love him so much. He's, he's a great director, man. Henry, if David Fincher wanted to dock you, would you let him? <laughs> Just like place, oh, place his penis upon your penis. I don't think that I would allow that. No, I don't. I don't care. You for wouldn't him let that. that? Come on! No, nah, no. Nah, just what keep if making, what if this happened? What if David Fincher? Films, Finch. What if David Fincher mm-hmm. said, "Henry, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will let you work side by side with me on my next film as a, se- mm-hmm. a second unit director, mm-hmm. if you finger my butthole for twenty minutes." <laughs> I think I'd have to call up Gloria Allred and, and file a Me Too grievance. Are you kidding me? You'd get your boy David Fincher in trouble like that? Sure. Yeah. That's that's uncalled for behavior. I wouldn't go for that. Yeah. I think you're crazy. I'll, you know, w- would you do that if Paul Thomas Anderson asked you? Yes. Uh, all right. Well, that's, that's the difference between you and me. Yeah. You know what the difference between you and me is, Henry? You <laughs> what? I make this look good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, classic oh, stuff. Nice. That was that was good. Uh, number one, uh, boogie nights. <laughs> number one. Speaking of another director, I would not do that for uh, deconstructing Harry. Oh, certainly not. <laughs> oh, he gets it. Certainly not. He yeah. might. He might not ask though. Oh, mm. good point. Leprechaun four colon in space. Speaking Big of colons. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh yeah. henry excellent vfx in the beginning henry the visual effects in this movie it looks like you know when people say like these special effects are so bad they look like a video game cutscene, right. and like usually that means it looks like garbage but like i'm not talking about like even you know playstation 2 oh. like i it looked to me like like Sega Saturn. I felt like I was playing Sega Saturn. I mean, all I know is that they should have just gone for like an old Atari look and it would have achieved like a different funny purpose. Oh, that would have been funny. Like show like it in like from an asteroids perspective. Yeah, that would have been better, man. I mean, like this is just, I don't even know. I mean, I can't. It's unbelievable. It makes like that wing commander movie look incredible. Yes, I mean that's, that's what and I, I know. Mean by I know this. it's low budget, three million dollars, and we're doing a lot of digital uh-huh. effects in the movie. Yeah. But like, they are not trying. And and like, part of me thinks like, because Brian Trenchard Smith does love some camp. Like, maybe the bad effects are like intentional. But I mean, it looks Just, it looks like the Independence Day video game on the Sega Saturn. It 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 looks it's worse than the uh you know uh, introduction and out 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 what am I trying to say not the inner workings of the ship the outer workings of the ship in Mystery Science Theater three thousand you know when they're flying through space that it's looks worse. so much better Henry because yeah. it's practical yeah. effects right right I mean this is be- robot chicken looks better than this you know. 
because it's practical effects. They they don't use any practical effects in this movie. It's all I mean, some of the makeup is cool or whatever, like when um the German scientist guy uh turns into the fly. Um we'll get to that. But um I I mean so much of this movie is just like I'm I'm watching like Virtual Boy. <laughs> Ah, yeah. Like or like a PC game. I felt like I was watching my friend play Mist or something. Right, right, right. Yeah. Or Riven, the sequel to Mist. I'm pretending as though I know what you're talking about, but sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or like Final Fantasy VII or something. Right. I I I I know what that is. Okay. Yes. Mm. Um. So we're on uh, planet. Ithacon, uh, we're aboard a um, a vessel. A mil- I guess it's a military vessel. It certainly looks like. Uh, well, it doesn't look like it, but yes, they, it looks like the uh, plot of Aliens, with a bunch of Marines going onto a it's, planet. Yeah, to kill. yeah, right. It's a crew, and they're searching. They're hunting an alien, and um, we soon find out that the alien they're hunting is the Leprechaun. He's never called the Leprechaun in this movie. He's always Alien or whatever. Right, and they um, have a they have a, a, a metalhead guy. They've sure, got a they're, black man. Their leader got a is. Woman. Okay, yes, their leader is has a metal head, Henry. He's my MVP. He's my MVP. I really enjoyed him. I thought he was genuinely funny. Well, you know what he was in. What? Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> That's funny. He's the uh, helicopter pilot when he's just, he's showing in the second half of the movie, obviously, when he's just uh, gunning down people in the field and he's going, get some, get some. Oh, he's get some guy. All right. He's get some guy. Yeah. Just don't lead him so much. Yeah. Well, he's kind of doing the same thing in this and he's very well, funny. Well, yes. Yeah. yeah. The uh, black guy you mentioned earlier is, of course, the great Juana man. Is that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wow. I don't know if you remember Juana Man. Oh, I do indeed. But yep. I didn't know that was the titular. Yeah, okay. The titular Juana Man. Very interesting premise of that movie. It's a fellow who uh, dresses up as a lady to become a basketball player, names himself Juana Man. Don't know why he went with that name. A, it tips off the fact that he's a man. Second, it, it doesn't does. make sense that the joke is his name is You Want a Man. Right. Right, right. Do you want a man? All right. Don't get it. Never got that movie. Very um, there's a lady on the ship who's horny all the time, and she's quite. played. Yes. Yeah, she's played by. Uh, wait, who? What'd you say? I just said quite. quite yeah, horny. She's yeah. a horny girl. She's a bad girl, Henry. And she. Very bad. She's played by Debbie Dunning, who um, was one of the uh, replacement Tool Time girls after Pamela Anderson left Home Improvement. There you go. So she's probably blown uh, A, cocaine, Mal. and B, Tim Allen's dick. <laughs> a, cocaine. Probably on the same <laughs> night. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, and the dude uh, she's uh, trying uh, to bone in this movie is uh, who uh, ultimately uh, releases the leprechaun from <laughs> Twix to his dick. Um. <laughs> Is a fellow named Jeff Mead, who, of course, you'll remember as the uh, vampire from episode five of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, right. I knew I'd seen him somewhere. We've also encountered him before, Henry. He, uh, I don't remember him in either of these movies, but he is in both Fast Five and uh, Resident Evil Extinction. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Wow. Well, you look around the corner, and he's going to be in any franchise you find. I think we'll see him a little more down the road. and um, <laughs> so. Down the road, we're going to find Mooch. In, uh, oh, no, sorry. What's his name again? I don't know. So, um, Books is another oh, guy. A, there, you, were, you cut me off. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not important. Books is a is a character that we uh-huh. meet in this film. He's sort of our audience POV character, but he's he's like um he's interesting. I, I don't totally understand this character because <laughs> they he's played by kind of a nerdy looking dude. He hasn't gone on to anything. His name is Brent Jasmer. Jasmer. Um probably best known for being reunited with his birth mother on an episode of Geraldo in nineteen ninety three. Um <laughs> Yeah. 
Ah, that's great. Uh, I'm DB Trivia. Uh, was so, that the uh, was that the same episode where Geraldo was getting beaten up by the Ku Klux Klan? Oh, got a blood God, cut. love it, love it. Um, so he, um, it's interesting because he looks like a nerd, but then also he he's written as being this like real alpha guy, ripped. But then yeah. they named him Books. Books, yeah. Books so which Malloy. is it? So which is it? Movie. And what? Tell me about Irish, this guy. Too. What is he like? Does he like books? Is he smart? Is he alpha? Is he dumb? I have no idea. I don't know. What a what a strange uh, incongruence and confluence of of a name here. You know, the actor is his his name is very waspish, right? You so you get Brent Jasmer. Which sounds like a Steven Seagal character, and then his name is Books Malloy, so it's, <laughs> it's an Irish name Malloy. So they stuck that in there. So maybe it was a little subtle, you know. We'll get an Irishman to defeat the leprechaun this time. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't or know either. I might be thinking too much. Maybe. And then we have a new character on board the ship uh, to join our erstwhile squad and uh she is uh named um tina yeah. Well, yeah and she's played by this actress jessica collins who um i've seen in a bunch of shit including it's always sunny and mm-hmm. an episode of gray's anatomy she's an emmy award winner henry daytime emmy emmy award winner <laughs> all right <laughs> and- that was <laughs> that was an excellent usage of Mr. Simone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very good. I usage. also remember her from a very memorable episode of Everwood, Henry. So, uh, and also Dawson's Creek. So I, I am, uh, I'm a big fan of this. Uh, I'm a big fan of this actress. And uh, you know what? For her, she's a, she did a lot of work. Yeah. She's a working actress. Um, did bum me out when, uh, I looked her up before the movie started. <laughs> And the first thing I learned about her was that she, like, studied at the Royal Shakespeare Company in England. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. So, the Royal then, so then it was no. just a fucking bummer to watch her <laughs> acting in this movie. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. She uh, she's Italian, and she changed her name. I'm sure for you know people's uh, digestion. Her her name was she was born Jessica Caponia. Well, she doesn't look Italian at all. She's like waspy well, blonde. Well, you know, it could be a dye job, and then you that's possible. Not- she looks huh? a little like Pete Sampras's lady. <laughs> He's from he's from Synecdoche, Synecdoche, New York. Yeah. Schenectady, yeah. Oops. Oh no, no, Synecdoche. Oh, I see. You're going with the Charlie Kaufman movie there. Forty-seven years old. Yeah, I'm gonna see if she's free. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's married. I happen to know that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Henry, uh, so what is happening in America? First of all, at first we're not told what year That's it a good is. Good question. And so uh, I thought we were maybe a thousand years in the future because sure. the leprechaun is looking to take a wife, and we know that that happens every thousand years. Right. And so he's he's uh, he wants this queen to be his wife. I loved this character, by the way. This pr- or, or she's not a queen, is she? She's a princess. She's a princess Zarina. You loved her character. I really, really did. Be- I-, I loved her character simply because there's one scene. Where she just whips her boobs out. Yes. And just walks around with her boobs out for a while. When yeah. she's got glitter on her body, that's how you know she's alien. Right, right, right. And, right. Um, and then uh, she leaves the scene, and, and I'm thinking, like, wow, what the fuck was that? And then right. another character has to deliver a line of exposition about how in her alien race... When you whip your boobs out in the presence of somebody, it means you've marked them for death. Oh, I didn't remember that line. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. So that's the reason she had her boobs out. Simple as that, Henry. Makes (laughs) sense. 
C E N T S or S E N S E? Both, baby. So, okay. but we're not a thousand years in the future. It turns out we're in the year 2096. And yeah. I don't know why this American crew in the spaceship is taking orders from a megalomaniacal German mad scientist. I'm not sure either. Uh, it's about 77 years from now. Uh, I will be dead. Uh, you Thank might God. be alive. I don't yeah. want to be alive. I don't either, man. Uh, no, 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 no. Get the fuck but, off uh, this planet. So am I. <laughs> Sooner the better. Uh, yeah. Well, they don't know, right? He's just a a, a TV screen. At, hit yeah. For at a first, while. he's sort of he's just Krang from the Ninja Turtles. We only see yeah. his head on a screen, and right. uh, he's like, "Listen, turtles." <laughs> <laughs> And, Do you uh, feel, fulfill my orders at any cost? Right. Human life is not as important as science. Yeah. Right. So he's, he's, he's one he's, of He's those also guys. from Synecdoche. Yeah. And so he he's running things on the ship, and then we finally get a glimpse of him in real life, and it's it's like he's sort of living. He doesn't have legs, or it's very odd. He's like molded to this. Um, contraption it's a little bit like dr octopus or something yeah he's like a cyborg i guess and he's got this sort of igor like figure working for him right uh he's a he's a he got on my nerves yeah, yeah I, mean, I found of, him. I found him very funny at first. If like we just checked in with I him, don't mean, I don't mean Mittenhand. Oh, the the the. I I mean I didn't. He got on my nerves too, but no, the assistant. Yeah, yeah. I, the assistant was a little annoying. At one point, the uh, the princess is like passed out in his lab, and he's just like smelling her cooch. That was fucking. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. The German got on my nerves too, though, because oh, I th- I yes. thought he was gonna be like this little part, and like only like we check in with him on the TV every so often. I thought that would be funny if like we only ever saw his head, but right. then like when he became a legitimate character in the movie with like an arc and shit, I was like, no, thank you. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's too much. And then he starts to turn into a um a sort of scorpion like figure. Yeah, it's just And there's even uh, like a reference to Cronenberg's The Fly at one point. He's like he's got a help me line. Right. I caught that. Yeah. 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 There's a Oof. little bit of that. Um and so they're having a real nice time. They go down to the planet. They kill the, they blow up the leprechaun, but we know I think after four movies we know that the that does not hurt the leprechaun. No, it doesn't matter. Um I'm turned on again because the princess is kinda into fucking the leprechaun because he's got money. Right, so he, you're happy. Yeah, because he shows her his pot of gold. Right. Um right. You're, you're you're thrilled. Uh there's a, a Hank Pym moment, right? Or Scott Lang. Have your pick your pick your poison. Oh, you mean he becomes Hank. giant? Right, right, right. Yeah, he's very happy with that. Of course, he looks to looks at his his lep dick and makes sure that I uh, I know I know we're constantly well, you know that's gonna sexualizing happen. this fucking leprechaun. <laughs> he's obsessed with his dick. I wonder if the leprechaun community is upset with the way leprechauns are treated. Excuse me, Henry. The, the leprechaun community. Sure. Oh, aren't they like a Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking that they're like real at this point. The movies have so sucked me into the universe. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've really been pulled into the reality of the Leprechaun Yeah, I was franchise. thinking like maybe somewhere in, in Limerick, Ireland, there's a, you know, a, a, a Leprechaun community that's outraged. You know, maybe somewhere in Belfast. You know, I don't know. Do you think the Oompa Loompas feel underrepresented? I, I would think they would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Now, Not a member. <laughs> Uh, the leprechaun also gets a hold of a lightsaber, Henry. The, yes, that he does. How did that, he, how did they manage that? I don't know. I blame Obama. But I feel like Lucas Lucas is quick to sue. I'm surprised they got away with this. Well, something tells me uh, that George sometimes doesn't see everything that they send to him through SAG. So, uh, you know, but he they might even not included like the sound effect is very similar to the lightsaber. It, it, it just slipped through the cracks. It slipped through the cracks of George Lucas's me fingers. 
Ähm, <lacht> Steven? Ja. Hey, how you doing, man? It's been a while. Uh, hey. Um, I, I, you're wrong about me, Henry. Henry? Yeah. I, I, oh, I, I watch. Said Steven. You, you know, you're I, I call Steve. everyone Steven. Oh. Um, I, uh. <laughs> I, w I do watch everything that's sent to me with the... I, well, not anymore, because that's up to Kathleen Kennedy. But now I, I used to watch all... A friend of mine, yeah. I used to watch all the, the stuff, and including I've seen Leprechaun 4 in space. I let it pass because I thought it was a brilliant film. Did you get uh, a couple of inspirational ta uh, pointers from it for your uh, prequel trilogy? Well, um, I will say well, the effects are about as good. Doctor so. Doctor Mittenhand, that that yeah. German fella. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody, but that's that. I was very inspired by him to create Sebulba. <laughs> I one didn't. Of, I didn't see the similarity. One there, of my greatest creations. I thought Sebulba. you were going to say the, that that coughing general, Grievous. General Grievous? No, that that Part. came from my beautiful brain. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and uh, of course, um, Watto came from uh, Jews. Okay. But uh, so I saw this film. I I really enjoyed it, and I I let them have the lightsaber, one of my great inventions. Uh, that was very generous of you. But remember, George, going going forward from now, hashtag no ne no Netflix noms. Oh, I couldn't agree more, Stephen. I figured that you were on that page with me. I am on the page because I value the theater-going experience. And if I don't see something in theaters, did it truly exist at all? It's sacred, George. It's sacred. It's so sacred. Um, I, I couldn't get through Roma because you have to read it. But um, I did watch uh, The Kissing Booth. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't think that should be eligible for the noms. The only time, George, that I want to read subtitles is if it's if it's in a, a, a language from Star Wars that needs translating. Or like, in like a Jabba. flashback in the Indiana Jones movies. There you go. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Food um, for thought. Yeah. I enjoyed the BFG. See ya. Oh, thanks. Okay. That was one of the stranger, more casual conversations. Uh, Steven seems and like very he got recent. On his it mind. seems it must have been like this month. I think it was because Steven seemed like he was not in a great mood about. I think the Netflix. I don't debacle. think Spielberg's in a great mood about much these days. No. <laughs> What's his problem? He, you know, Bridge of Spies was decent. <laughs> I think he's very proud. I think he's very proud of Ready Player One, Henry. Ooh, that might be it. Um, Maybe he's mad about that. Okay, so they blow up the leprechaun, and um, the 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 vampire from Episode Five of Buffy pees on his ashes, and um, <clears throat> the and the leprechaun somehow manifests inside of his dick. So then he takes the tool time girl out back in the ship. And um, he she puts his hand her well first she takes her top off so we get to see her sweet bra clad boobs and then <laughs> um, you, tool time girl ain't showing nip so but uh, we get to see a lot right. and then uh, he he um, he says oh baby shake hands with the big guy right. and she's starting right. to give him a little H J action um, right. and it looks pretty tender but it's really bothering him he says take it easy. You right. Don't, you don't want to hurt Mr. Snake. Right. Um, right. Oh, my God. And then he collapses on the ground and uh, fucking <laughs> his dick pops off and he dies and the leprechaun comes out of it. Sean and it's me again interrupting the flow of the show. <laughs> yeah. Here he is again, your favorite leprechaun coming out of his dick. Henry, then, you're, you're doing too much of an Irish accent. He has no Irish accent. 
He I just know, sometimes just says make, me go. I'm trying to make him interesting. I'm also rhyming too much. Uh, yeah. it, it's almost like a cutoff haiku. Just say me time. gold and me boyo, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> me gold and me boyo, out here, dick. If you want to see me pull another trick, I'll try. <laughs> right? That's yeah. what they're like. That That's is what, what they're, they're like. like. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. Where's the rest of the rhyme? Yeah. Oh, it's grating. Henry, it's great. Um, Henry. <laughs> so the rest of this movie is just like an alien then it's riff. A chase. They're just like, yeah. yeah, like we said in the first two. The like the yeah. whole like second and third acts of these movies are just like chasing this leprechaun around, or the leprechaun chasing them around. Um. So we're just like chasing them around in the bowels of the ship and they need to get into um the uh the german guy's computer at one point which i really liked because it's like mid 90s and they're trying to figure out his password (laughs) which is so funny because like i love anything with like old people writing about passwords ready player one was like this too henry speaking of fucking ready player one there is a fucking scene in ready player one where they they, there's like the villain he's got like a throne room okay. and they find the password to his computer written on a little piece of paper on his throne oh there you go <laughs> yeah. uh, but in this one they don't even need a little piece of paper they just um, they just uh, they, they try a few things my favorite thing they sit down at the computer and she's like um, oh well what what would he do What let's think of the things we know about him Right. Maybe his password is scientist. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they try that, it doesn't work. And then one of the guys is like, hey, hey, try brilliant scientist. Yeah. And that doesn't work either. And then finally no. the answer is wizard, because I guess this guy has like a Wizard of Oz fetish. Right. Because he's the man behind the curtain. Yeah, he even curtain. says that, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's how they figure it out. I am the man behind the curtain. Yeah. I'm not, I wasn't too impressed with Dr. Tina Reeves' uh, scientific knowledge. Nor was I. Wasn't... She was very much a Dr. Christmas Jones in that way. But um, I, <clears throat> I, I did appreciate the actress. Metalhead guy is definitely my MVP. But um, I think she gave the best female performance in any of these movies since Aniston. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I mean, know that's, that's not saying, saying a lot. I was just gonna say. I mean, this is the this is the porn of the four so far. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. ever watch a porn, Henry? And you're like, you know, because they improvise a lot in porn. Like they don't have a lot of the scripts written. And every so often, How do you I'm, know? is that the one you filmed? They didn't give you a script. <laughs> I just i I assume they give. I think it's. I think porn is done like Kirby, like Curb Your Enthusiasm, where yeah. they have a general outline for a scene, and they have to like get to the fucking, you know. Yeah, but I would I would think on the on the soft core, there's definitely like a script, right? No, Maryland. the soft core for sure. If you're seeing some like gauze on the filter, they 100 percent have a script. But if we're if we're talking like just like internet porn, there there's. They're working their way through the scene to get to the fucking. And I think some porn actors are better at this than others. Right. And uh, Dr. Uh, Tina Reeves. I think she's very good. Yeah. (laughs) God. (laughs) Well, Metalhead is an MVP. Uh, I'm going to go LVP. He's great. He reminded me of Kano from uh, fucking uh, Mortal Kombat. I know that reference. I used to play that game, so I, I maybe I, I'm, I'm some nostalgia going on there. Uh, yeah, you know, I had written Warwick again uh, earlier, uh, when, actually during the movie. Uh, or but, Leslie Nielsen from Surf Ninjas. He had a metal head. Mm, <laughs> mm, there you go. Yeah. All right. Keep That's the what it reminded up. me of. Leslie Nielsen from Surf Ninjas. Leslie Nielsen. I'm sure we'll be getting to him eventually. Uh, sure, Naked Gun franchise. Has he Air- been in another one? Airplane. Yeah, of course, Airplane. Yeah. You ever do a Spy Hard sequel? I hope so. Wrongfully accused? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <Mister Magoo>. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Uh, now, my LVP is going to go to that creepy assistant. Creepy assistant? That's your MVP? 
Oh, LVP. LVP. Okay, and who's your and your MVP's metalhead guy? Yeah, get some. I'm just gonna go ahead and say Horror that Horror. no. You know what? I really do. The, the we didn't talk about him that much because he's such a, a fucking inscrutable character. But the male lead who who does end up with her at the end, they fucking kiss, which yeah. they f- remembered to do in this movie. Right. Um. Uh. I I did not understand that character, and I. Uh, the performance was not giving me anything, and so I, I think that guy's my LVP. He's so, he's the books, male lead of the movie. We gotta care at all. Books Malloy. Books, yeah. <laughs> Brent Jasmer. Sure. All right. Well, I have a, a two count on the uh, on the superheroes. Uh, uh, I'd love to hear it. I'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> I toyed with letting it keep the game. Oh. Well, maybe I'll do it I'm soon. Okay, so um, <clears throat> your friend Jessica Collins. Who's that? What, <laughs> Is that Tina? The one, went, the one you went on and on about. Sure, yes. sure. Yeah. She was also in her long career from the British Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Uh, she was in... Uh, an episode of Lois and Clark. I feel like there's got to be more than two in this movie. Like, a lot of these actors have gone on to do, like, tons of shit. Well, I only found two. Okay. Um, uh, she played a character in Lois and Clark named Mindy Church. Sure. Why not? <laughs> they. It was actually Mindy Synagogue. And they <laughs> to, wanted to appeal to a wider demographic. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, Rick Peters, who I believe, uh, he played Mooch, and I believe Mooch was the guy who got his dick splattered in half. Um, uh, No. No. No, Kowalski got his dick splattered in half. I don't even remember who this Mooch fella is. They talk about him a lot in the movie, but I couldn't place uh, the face. He's uh, still there. working. See, look, all these actors, they're yeah. still working. Well, Rick Peters has, uh, I got a three count on him. I'd love to hear it. Smallville. He played uh, Bob Rickman. Bob Rickman. Bob Rickman. Okay. Mm-hmm. In uh, the TV Aquaman, famous, infamous, two thousand something pilot, whatever. Right. He played Admiral Brigman. Admiral Brigman. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And he and he plays or played Doctor. Haneke in Agent Carter. Very interesting, Henry. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Rick He's done some work. Yeah. Is that all you got? It's all I have. Okay, well, uh I'll I'll uh, correct you. Um <laughs> please do. Jeff Mead, the fellow who did get his dick blown apart. Hmm. Henry was in that uh, David E. Kelly unaired Wonder Woman pilot. Oh, damn you, yeah. Wikipedia. As a character named Mick Raven. <laughs> oh. That's so Mick Raven. Is. What's his uh, name again? Uh, Jeff Mead, Henry. Jeff Mead. <laughs> Where they didn't even they didn't even give him the dignity of his own Wikipedia page. Poor guy, he's worked a lot. He got nothing on there. He's All even right. directed Henry, this fellow. What, what did he direct? Um, I think a movie I've heard of. Give me a second. <laughs> uh, he drew, oh, <laughs> you know what he's done? He's worked a lot with um Asylum. So he's okay. Asi- Asylum's the the they make those movies that are like sort of designed to be sort of like movies that are popular at the time. Oh yes, a lot so, of two, lot of things on Tubi like that. So he's written and directed a bunch of movies like that, um, including um, a, a movie called Atlantic Rim. Perfect. Yeah. Um, a movie called Operation Dunkirk. Okay. An yeah. Independence Day. <laughs> okay. He wrote those, and he also directed a film called The Amityville Haunting. Wow. Yeah. 
Wow. All right. So there um, you have <laughs> R.I.P. Margot Kidder. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Oh, right. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, did we give this movie a one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This right. is a low one. You got anything else to say? The worst, the worst one so I far. I think so. It was, it, you know, I I like silly space shit, and I um, I enjoy Jason X. That is not the worst in that franchise. Uh, this is this is really dire. That and was I'm, so much better. I mean, we're so not much even, better. We're in a different plane now. I mean, I I think you you mentioned the word nadir earlier uh, of the of uh, the leprechaun franchise, but uh, I, you know this is one of the worst movies we've ever I've ever seen for this show. This is one of the worst movies we've covered for sure. I I am legitimately excited to get the hell out of space and to the hood. 